Hello painting two. Let's go ahead and get some inspiration for our next watercolor assignment, which is a hyper realistic image focusing on the qualities of light. So reflection and refraction and cast shadows. But I'll have some other suggestions for you too as we go through. So what you want to do is to think about how you're going to create this painting. We're gonna use some hyperrealism, which is photorealistic detail. It doesn't mean we can't alter the photo and I'll show you some examples of student work. Um, but what we want to do is to focus on um, what and how you portray this. Um, I want you to think about that each of these will be individuals and I really don't want it to look like it's a class assignment. So your choices are to manipulate lighting you can use things like high contrast or high key lighting. You can experiment with cast shadows or low light. You could also look at reflections. So we'll see some examples that are in water or in other reflective surfaces. And then we can also emphasize surface. So we'll see you know, reflective surfaces as well as um, refraction. So tips for taking your photos. Um, you may not use copyrighted photos or images that you take from the internet. So all of the work that you are using um, or creating from this point on should be your own. If you borrow from a family member, you must alter the image in some sort of way. Um, you can take photos for this, but you can also look at photos that you might have. But if you're going to take pictures, make sure that you look through the camera's viewfinder to find the composition. So compose within the frame as you're taking your photos. Um, go to different locations and take several different photos from different angles. Um, you might want to think about eliminating distracting background or distracting people. So sometimes you need a little bit of patience when you're taking these photos. You know, if you go to a park, you might have to wait for people to move so that you don't include them in the image. We could also take them out of the image, um, but as long as they're not blocking a lot of your detail. Oop. So take as many photos as you like. Um, you probably want to think about maybe your best 12, and you can also use old photos. So you could think about maybe places you've gone on vacations or trips. Um, that you've taken or places you've gone and create a folder and i'd like you to put your images in that folder so don't put it in process portfolio put it in a folder in case we need to manipulate the photo using photo p and they're due on may 11th so types of lighting this is high key so thinking about sun drenched look um, so think about maybe you've gone on vacation you've been somewhere tropical um, where are some of these images you might have at home? Or you could make an intention to go somewhere. Um, with high key, it creates strong shadows and cast shadows, which is fun to manipulate in watercolor. You can see in this basket, it was probably all yellow, so all the light yellow to begin with, and then they just added the dark. Cast shadows, we can simply do with glazing. You do not have to feel like you have to, um, you know, do the whole house. You can look for interesting details. So try to think about how you can kind of crop in and create imagery that has maybe repetition of rectangular or vertical or horizontal elements. You know, look for cast shadows and focus on them. Low light, you have to be very careful about. Most of the time with your cell phones, you guys are able to do this um, pretty easily now. So just make sure that you don't get a lot of blur. If you wanna try low light. If you are gonna do some night photography, make sure that you use the proper setting on your camera. So you might have to experiment with that or look for your specific model of camera or phone to see how to work that. You can do images at dusk special lighting and surfaces. Google's acting funny, so I apologize. Um, 
here we go, refraction in water. So you can look through a pond or a fish tank or like a koi pond. And this looks pretty challenging, but actually watercolor is the best media for techniques that are like refraction. Okay, here we go, back. So here's more simple refraction. So in a glass instead of a fishbowl. So this is all started with the light and then gradually adding the dark as we go. You can think about reflection. You can check out more of these images by this artist who does watercolor reflections of landscapes. Think about vacations you've taken. All of these examples I'm showing you, by the way, are hyper-realistic watercolor. Do you have any transparent objects, things that are made out of glass, um, are really fun and really easy to paint in watercolor? You could set up a still life of glass bottles or vases. You can look at shiny objects. You can look at reflective surfaces so that you can see the mirrored image. Um, sometimes it's nice to manipulate and have different kinds of surfaces in a still life. So not all of them be made out of like reflective materials like trumpet, but here's paper and metal and flora, like flora, flora, flowers. Oh my, I was gonna say flora and paper, things that are translucent, transparent. You know, watercolor is the best way to make things look that way because the media is transparent. So here's some student examples of manipulation of light. This is like the low light, high key. Um, here's some examples from spring. So I just wanted to mention that, you know, you take your own photos and then you paint and you can see she took a little bit of license in the background. She didn't want it to be as dark. So it doesn't have to be perfect representation of the photo. It just should look like it has realistic detail and value. These are the ones that were done remotely last year. And here's some others from past years. So some of these are kind of like close-ups, reflective surfaces. This was looking through a window, it was like a snowy day. Here's a reflection, right? So reflection, you can see the window in the fluidity of the eye. A little reflection in the snow and the ice. Reflection of the sky, reflection of the canyons and red mountains, reflections of the drums. And then this is surface. So we have icicles. You can see that in past years we do this during the winter. So there's a lot of icy photos. Here's those trans or those glass objects. We do food again, jellyfish. Yep. So I would like you to start finding some photos. And um, this slide says four, but try to see if you can get at least 12 and put them in your folder. Just make sure that whatever you do, it meets the requirements of the assignment. So just eventually, and I'll show these later, we'll start at light, and then we'll gradually add more and more dark so that it has a photorealistic quality to it. 